All right. right. Good job, lads. Uh, um, so, Maya, you were going to start this one, right? Yes. So, um, just, okay. So, because cause we're going to, you know, have a conversation about things like with the military, and that kind of stuff. Um, I thought I'd regale everyone with a with a brief story about, um, I think, my favorite part of um, Kaohsiung Gai in uh, the, the very last year where we had to go and, uh, you know, go into the camp thing for five days. And essentially what happens is um, we're, set, we're sitting down waiting for things to happen. And then... This is, one, this is in the woods, right? This is in the woods. And then w- one yeah. of the guys, um, one of the um, uh, crew foot, He's his his uh his like not his it's not like a satellite radio but it's like his walkie-talkie goes off right, and it's this guy asking him if he wants some cigarettes, um and the conversation just you know it, it goes so loudly, um that that everyone hears and the guy's like you know um uh do, do you want one or two packs and then uh one of the students in the very front row says you know uh, one for me too please. Because the conversation that we just had before this guy's thing went off is, all right, no knives, no guns, no cigarettes, um, and then <laughs> wait, no guns at fucking military hey, training. Hey, hey, don't ask me. The that ones sucks. that we use are dummy rifles. <laughs> uh, we use dummy uh. rifles. And uh, this guy, this guy, he lost his dummy rifle, so we had to clean out the toilets, and Oof. his school didn't do anything to clean out the toilets oh uh, because you're in like groups of yeah, schools yeah, right yeah, yeah yeah no i just think that there's no real like authority like it like it, when you go to kajun guy it just proves to you um that um the, the the actual authority that the military has over you in that period of time is strictly just because you let them have it because they have no real desire to like you know, they, they they know you don't want to be there. <laughs> they know they're not making you into soldiers. It's <laughs> the, just fucking ritual. Yeah, it's it's all ritualistic because they have to because you know it. You know, it's that's that's the law. At least that's how I view it. My favorite part is when you when when it's like time to pray, and they say they take all the Buddhists away. Sorry, they they take all the Muslims away, and we always joke that you know they're gonna get like taken to camps or something like that. Um, <laughs> But no, the reality <laughs> is, they, they, it's just that they just get sent to go pray in a different corner. The Buddhists pray mm-hmm. in one place, and then everyone's like, all right, put, um, put, uh, look. So uh, me and Samaya were just talking while you were moving rooms, and uh, we were wondering, uh, could you masturbate at Rodor or like when you were in the military? No, because you, 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 you stay. Not at all. No, because you you have to be in the same uh, tent, you know. Yeah, yeah. See, with, I, with could, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Uh, however, some of my friends managed to do it. Um, I'm, I, I, they are stronger men than I. Brave. Um, Those are our brave troops. The, so, uh, no, how many days? Oh, how, how many? I mean, oh, I only yeah? got up to, I only got up to five days. Hmm. Because I only did you, you uh, in the third design. year, right? Yeah, in I the did third design. year, right? I, I did what I had to do, and then I left. That is uh... yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was like you know, we because I I went there when I was in my fourth and fifth years. So I I did five years in 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 in, in Rodar in in mm. in the military reserve force. It's not it's not only three years because I I live in the northern part of Thailand. So I yeah. I don't go to Khao Chun Kai. Oh uh, uh, yeah, that's in, right. In, yeah, in the yeah. second and the third year, so I, I I went to my local camp when I was in the second and, and third year. So I I went there, uh, you know I've been there for like you know like ten day each, you know ten days each. So it, it's not going to be as rough as as the third year student. Yeah, you have to carry your guns and all the heavy stuff and walk a lot. You know it, it's like it's like trekking more than more more than go camping or training they're, they're not going to train you that much you know they were like you know now we're we're, we're learning on you know like how, how you say like attacking how to attack you know like you have yeah, to yeah, put yeah. put your your team in a position and you know give that. your signal and then yeah yeah, yeah so, something like that in, in culture and guide but uh yeah as you say it's 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 all ritualistic but more than that it's like they, they they just want you to to know how to to be under the power 
you know, because the mm. military just want to seize and control the power over Thailand for like a long time, even after the 1932 revolution, you know, like uh, uh, Field Marshal Black, Phibun Songkram, was in power for like a, a very long time, right? Before, before the monarchy uh, was the main agent in Thai politics, there was a military before, and that military side had conflict with k uh, a n a l a s a d o n the People's Party side. You know, like they they divided into at least two uh, groups, right? So military has power, so they just want to expand the power as much as they can, starting from Field m a r s h a l Black to Bun Songkram. So I think uh, the Law Daw thing uh, came from uh, the idea that the military want to spread the idea of military power all over the Thailand to let Thai people, especially men, to be, you know, like tame with. These kind of power. Mm. Mm. Mm, that's that's what sure. I thought. Why, 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 why they want all Thai student to to feel what the military feel. Not not essentially, you know, not like the drafting conscription, not like the real soldier. But at least you you know how to you know attention. You know how to push down. You know how to crouch to prone. You know how to hold the gun. Even nobody knows how to shoot. <laughs> you know, like nobody knows how to shoot. Can you shoot? So, Mike, can you shoot? I I can. Um, <laughs> I, I I can. Um, as in, I can pull the trigger. But no, no, I I, mm-hmm. I I'm 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 on target. I, I uh, mm-hmm. on, you're on, on the target. target. As also in the center most of the time. It's 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 mm-hmm. fine. It's mm-hmm. the video games. We should we should probably explain actually what Rodol is for our for our listeners. So oh, it's like oh, okay. a little yeah. taster of the military while you're at. High school, basically, in um, order to mm-hmm. avoid conscription. Mm-hmm. Don't yeah, forget that to part. That's the most later. important yeah. part. Of course. Yeah, yeah, you can ask every male high school student, like, "What are you doing, r o d o l f o r They're like, "Because yeah. I don't want to go on a conscription. I don't want to be a yeah. soldier. I don't the want to be private." The entrance test. The entrance test has that as a question. Why are you doing mm-hmm. this? And mm-hmm. everyone is told, like, "Don't whatever you you can answer anything except for the option that says." To get out of conscription, <laughs> hmm. yeah. yeah, they have that trap. They, they're the smart, conniving little fuckers. So I was going to say I've never obviously been in the Thai army, and I don't have that much experience with them. Although some mm. with the police, um, mm-hmm. but when I was in Patani, I definitely encountered them a lot. I mean, mm-hmm. like Patani city is like a real military occupation. Like I've been to mm-hmm. places with serious active civil wars and military. Mm-hmm. With real military occupations, but Patani is like mm-hmm. the heaviest military occupation I ever encountered. Like, I remember walking down the street and seeing these four soldiers on motorbikes just pull up in front of this little van and pull mm-hmm. the driver out at gunpoint to search the car. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. everyone else on the street who was mm-hmm. walking on the street just went about their business like it was normal, mm-hmm. you know. Um, mm-hmm. But they were totally chill with me. I think they kind of saw me as a curiosity. Like, <laughs> what the fuck is this Farang doing here? He must have got <laughs> lost on the tourist trail or something. I don't know. Right. Yeah, you know, because I think uh, in 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 the three provinces in in the southern Thailand have been in a state emergency for like more than more than decade. So that that that's yeah. why they have a lot of soldier military. Like yeah. The, the military province because like they all control. The three provinces. No, not only for the emergency reason, but now they 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 do more than that. You know, like there, there's an, there there's a lot of reports saying uh, those military rape Muslim people. You know, they they do a lot of they do a lot of bad things, like to you know, like to abuse people in the south. You know, yeah. they, they feel yeah. like I got power, I got state emergency, yeah. so I can do whatever I can. So. That that's why they want to they want to cancel this. You know, the the representative from the south saying that like the the Muslims in the south want to get yeah, rid of the yeah, military yeah, occupation. Yeah. yeah, like a while ago, I got suggested on Instagram for some reason mm-hmm. to follow this dude who was a Thai soldier assigned to mm-hmm. Patani, and he would like <laughs> post pictures on his Instagram like smiling and holding up these poor like Muslim guys at gunpoint mm-hmm. at checkpoints, and like <laughs> they looked fucking horrified. And mm-hmm. like I followed yeah. him for a bit out of curiosity, but it was so mm-hmm. fucking bleak. I had to unfollow. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's how. That's how. How how would I call this? Like, a, like military thinking works in Thailand. You have to be some kind of soldier in some way. You don't need to. But there's no war, you know. There's no war, so that's why you have to create the enemy. 
yeah. to to yeah. to to let people stay in the thought that you always fighting something. So that's why they have an anti nationalist, you know, like a like a some some uh, doctor in Pitsanulok somehow saying that there's always people who chang chat, right? Have people who hate the country, the country haters. Some like uh, some doctor in Jiang Watana saying there's always people who hate the monarchy. So we have to get rid of these people, you know. Mm-hmm. Like and interestingly. Those people were either soldier or doctor. I think they're like the most respected professions in Thailand, mm, right? Mm, doctor mm, and soldier, for, right? For the right. like Paklang Salim mm-hmm. crowd, anyway. Yeah, 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 right. So, so that that might be. And you know, let let's get back to to the, the raw door thing again, because I, I there's some point that I want to talk about. It's uh, it, it's not if you want if you really want to be in the military, you know, or be soldier in some way. They have the Armed Force Preparatory School, you know, which is the kind of elitist school to be yeah. in the military. I got you know, a neighbor like, going to that, yeah. So, oh, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, so, so you will be two or three years in the preparatory school, and then you go into the military academy for like five years, and then after that you finish, and you will be a second lieutenant. Like, you, don't, you, you just pass the non-commissioned officer. You don't have to be private, corporal, Surgeon. That's you know. that's a British model, mate. Yeah, that's where you got it. From. Like like yeah. Sandhurst, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, like Sandhurst. Like when so 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 this is start from from high school. You know, like when when you were like fourteen, fifteen. You know, if you sit the exam, you pass the test, and you go on the um, preparatory school. And it, it's, it it was so hard because I I was there. I I passed the exam. You know, I, I passed the writing exam, but I failed. On a medical examination because I'm flat feet. Oh, oh. yeah, interestingly, right? Because I'm flat feet. Yeah. How, how is it related to anything? I passed the the running, you know, like I ran, I pushed down, I sit up, I dish, I, I did anything, you know, I passed on everything, but I fell on medical examination saying I'm flat feet. Like, how, how does it relate to anything? It's I don't like, know, man. Maybe you'd be some crazy fucking asshole now if yeah. you pass. So. <laughs> That's right. So, so. So people who, who actually got in there will be trained like crazy, not not yeah. like by textbook training, but they will train you more than that, you know, like typically hard. And then like after that, you, you just part that. And and those people who 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 was alumni from those military school, you know, has a chance to be army chief or naval mm. air force or anything. So like people apart from that, people who's from somewhere else, you know, like they have a bachelor degree, undergrad degree, master, PhD from somewhere else. You know, you don't stand a chance to be, to be, mm. uh, to be a chief. To be. So if you're a little kid and you want to be like pro, you you know what to yeah. do. Yeah, you know what to do. You have to plan when you were in high school. You you, you have to yeah. plan yeah. even before the high school. You know, not 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 going to raw door because you want to be a soldier. You know, no, mm. that 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 that's not the reason. That that's the only reason that you go to raw door is because you want to avoid conscription. That's the yeah. only reason, you know, stop, stop lying to yourself, you know, Thai state, Absolutely. please stop lying to yourself. Like, that's yeah, that, that, that's, that's what I want to say. Because like you have, yeah, you have a, any other pathway that you want to be a soldier, not raw dog. You're, that's not a choice. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't actually introduce the episode. So of course we're joining, <laughs> talking uh, military today. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm joined by Samai Deng, as always, yeah. and Ice. Mm-hmm. Um, Ice is a... Uh, hmm, I don't know how to describe you. You're a man of many backgrounds. Um, I, how do you describe yourself? I am, uh, I am a post-human. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very good indeed. That fits. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's all we do. So let's back up a little bit and talk a bit 
of uh, Thai military history. And like you mentioned earlier, Ice, I think a good place to start is 1932, uh, the revolution mm-hmm. or coup that ousted King Prajatipok, Rama mm-hmm. Seven. So for a little background, obviously for centuries before that, the army was totally loyal to the absolute monarchy mm-hmm. until they began sending officers abroad to study Western military tactics and logistics. Mm -hmm. And this experience in the West in the early 20th century radicalized a lot of officers into becoming Mm -hmm. kind of Republicans or Republican light. Mm -hmm. So when a bunch of them came back, they saw it as their kind of responsibility to shape the country, to modernize it as they saw it, because nobody else would. There were no other forces in Thai society. So that's when, so that's what ultimately kind of led up to the coup of 32, which allowed the monarchy to remain really in name only at that time. And ultimately, this gave rise to Pibun, who you mentioned before, who was Thailand's kind of Mussolini, a uh, mm-hmm. fascist Republican, nice. who was a great admirer of Mussolini. He had a mm-hmm. picture of him on his desk, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, so then there was this period of hostility between the military and the monarchy, and of course, between the military and the more progressive elements in Thailand, mm-hmm. like Pridi and the leftist groups. Mm-hmm. Um, but when Bumipon ascended to the throne, he managed to very shrewdly, this is in the 1950s, with a lot of help from his allies and the US military, to kind of <laughs> malign the military into subordination through kind of real politic, through portraying the monarchy as a kind of better soul of the nation than the military. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, Bumipon put his own guys in charge of the military and its kind of their the military's big picture agenda of being a progressive force in Thailand completely shifted to being the ultimate guardians of the monarchy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a super long and fascinating story um, how that realignment took place, but it's kind of tricky to talk about without veering mm-hmm. towards getting jailed for Les Majeste. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. maybe we can tactically do an episode on that another day. Um, so there's kind <laughs> of only been one war in the past, one real war in Thailand in the past uh, century. Um, and uh, Samai, I know you're a big uh, Communist Party Thailand head. And like I said, that's been the only Wait. real war that the Thai... So, so Yeah, Thai so Army you're saying the in. only real war that they were involved in was was the insurgency? In the past kind of m- I mean, vaguely uh, modern era, okay. yeah. I mean, I guess you could, you could say that. I, I think that... Um, being being the being America's bitch in Vietnam was definitely um, not being part of the war, but more or less was just you know letting them run bombing campaigns out of uh, yeah like uh, Udon Thani and that kind of thing. Yeah, no. So uh, CPT insurgency is um, you know interesting in itself, but the the the, the role of the Thai military and the, the Thai government was actually you know better than you give it credit for. So think of it you like mean this. effective or better? How no, do no, 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 no. As in, like the things they did in order to counter the the the, the insurgency. You know, the, le- early on they realized that soft power had a lot more um, had a lot more traction with the Thai people. So instead of continuing with more overt sort of, you know. Um, shooting people, rounding them up in forests, that kind of thing, type situation. Yeah. Yeah. They sort of went, well, fuck. Sorry, language. Well, damn. The the communists want, um, you know, such and such. So we're going to give the Thai people such and such. So inadvertently, the communists forced the Thai government and the Thai military to construct roads out to rural parts of the country because... If there were CPT cells organizing in like hard to reach locations, the government and the armed forces can't reach there fast enough because the trail going there is like um, muddy and you can only travel it once a month if you're sitting on top of like a like a like a like a like a a buffalo or something like that. Right. So it created infrastructure. Exactly. They had they had to create infrastructure. So the CPT held the nation at gunpoint. And force the Thai government to develop infrastructure is the narrative I'm going to say. But the reality <laughs> is that, no, it's not that. It's just that in an effort to undermine the, the, the platform of the CPT, the Thai government and the military, you know, they, they took a, a, a various set of steps. And I'd like to also direct everyone's attention to the fact that the current, um, in, what's it called? The Information Special, not Information Something Commission, like the um, like like our CIA or something like that, um, 
that was initially called the communist suppression uh or something something right so this the I isoc internal security operations command right the internal security operations command it used to be called it, it used to be called the communist suppression operations command mm. oh yeah got all and that just on. goes to show how like the history of um sort of state control has been intertwined with the history of anti-leftism and anti-communism that existed in the cold war era and mm. also i think that it's incredibly important to remember that according to the old division of the world you know first world second world third world thailand has always been first world because we've always been aligned with the united states now if we talk developmentally that's very different so you know it depends how we categorize these things but because of the posturing of the military <clears throat> at the beginning of the cold war thailand was basically well off at least in the city in at least in bangkok for the elite you know, throughout the period of the 20th, 20th century uh, you know um they celebrated 200 years of friendship with america recently uh, i i mean <laughs> that is that is some, uh, you know, that is some dedication to be able to be friends with America for 200 years when it's only like 240 something years old. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's all. That's all definitely down to strategic alliances, thanks to. Um, but I mean, just, the, the just going back to the to yeah, the sorry. insurgency, the the Thai military. I mean, you know, like you said, they they did have a hearts and minds campaign. I think that was mm. more run by the monarchy. Um, but the military themselves were pretty bloodthirsty, and they oh, did I mean, some pretty yeah. nasty Red drums, counterinsurgency. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, mention. yeah, absolutely. I, I, I definitely think that um, just because it was more covert, um, bloody stuff, doesn't mean that there was, hmm. you know, necessarily less. It's just that they, they, they also, um, the, the, you know, as a unit, the monarchy, the military, and the royal Thai government, or they decided that there has to be, you know, instead of just, you know, going out and shooting people. <laughs> Um, yeah, we've got to do something else. And but I, I don't I, know, man. I think I I would attribute that more to the monarchy than yeah, than yeah. To I mean, I I, I think military. so too. I think so too because um, but I think but the way I'm saying it is like because the the monarchy like that they 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 brought that strategy to the table, that, yeah, so they yeah. mentioned it to the military. If you see what I mean, so it's it's um yeah, sort of that kind of input. But um, I think that we should definitely not neglect and we should say it completely openly for everyone to hear. That there was that one Pumipon speech, not speech, sorry, interview, where he was talking about the communists, right? And he was, he was being, oh, uh, no, no, I, I, sh I shouldn't, no, I couldn't, I couldn't. But Don't essentially, you, you know what I'm talking about. As long as you know what I'm talking about, that, what, that's what I'm talking about. Ice, Ice, can you I, I, I knew what was that, I knew what was that. Uh, I, then, I can't remember the exact word, but it's like, um, yeah. it's, it's between us yeah. and them, you know. Us and them, so it, it it's division, you know, between us and them. So there's authorness, and some famous scholar in Thailand said before that there's a author within, you know. Maybe you don't agree with that theory, but 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 at that time, it's perfectly uh, described this action, his action, the author within, and and they've been called the communist terrorist. You know, like the communist terrorist. Yeah, there was a guy. There was like uh, now there's one MP in 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 the parliament that he he was a police back then, and he has his uh, he has his 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 like best achievement of his uh, police career that he get rid of the uh, of the terrorist communist communist terrorist. You know, something like that. And 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 ironically that. The deputy, uh, deputy head of the parliament, you know, like he he has Sahai in his name. Amazing. He was a comrade. He, he was a Sahai before. He he was a comrade. He was a comrade. And, yeah, and and he was like, you know, you don't don't threat me. He he said to 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 the MP, don't threat me. I know you're like uh, the anti-terrorist back then, but I was the Sahai. Isn't this the dude that uh, said he would, if he had a gun, he'd shoot Pro in the head yeah. or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. but, but 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 interestingly, but now he 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 claimed himself to be in the democratic side of the parliament. You know, like he he he, he was he is in the opposition, but the other guy, the Sahai one, 
the the beauty the yeah. beauty head of the parliament he he said he was a Sahai, but now he's in the uh, dictatorship side. You know, it's like, yeah. So <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, why, why are you proud of being Sahai? For now, you 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 know, you be with the dictatorship side. What the fuck is that, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. So um, I think just to move on a little bit, yeah. I should mention mm-hmm. going back to our general military history that there have been. 13, give or take mm. 13 successful coups in Thailand since 1932, uh, typically kicking mm. out popularly elected governments. Mm. Most recently in 2014, there was a coup by General Prayut against Ying Lak Shinawat, and Prayut remains in power today. Um, so, Ice, I kind of wanted to ask you, since out of the three of us, certainly you've spent a lot more time with the military, and I'm wondering, in the kind of current era, how do they see themselves like what's their ideology how do they justify their actions particularly mm. with the coups and also the kind of handful of massacres of civilians that have happened in living memory as well uh there was one general yeah, to answer that question there was one general mm. saying that if there's any coup happen please call me and put me in the committees of the coup that that would be like graceful for my family like that that's how they see themselves you know like that that would be like okay so if you're gonna make something you know if you want to seize the power call me i'll i'm gonna join Uh, you because i'm always ready yeah i'm always ready because my surname will be in the committee you know like the coup like the team that that sees the power and and that will be you know like legacy from my family that once Mm. i i I did something good for this country so they still believe you make it sound quite passive at the same time like they're just waiting for somebody to say okay let's go do a coup yeah. like do they how much do they kind of have an active uh voice or an active agenda to to do these coups uh there has to be a signal you know it, it's not like you you do whatever you want because like you're you're not the only power in the game you know you 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 know when when a military willing to do a coup they 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 need to be a signal not only that one general, the army chief, or you know, like the army of the Thailand, or, or anything, will 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 commit that. So there there must be a signal, and the army chief have to go on a tour, you know, to every barrack in Thailand, you know, signifies every army leader in each province that okay, I'm gonna make a coup, and you're gonna cooperate me, or not. So, so when you say signal, I mean, dare I ask where the signal is coming from? I don't know. It's like... It, <laughs> who maybe, knows? Who knows? Maybe something happened simultaneously. You know, like maybe something happens at the same time. You know, like when they know there's a signal, there's a signal. You know, like you, you, you can't tell that someone order or someone take the action, take a command. You know, there's no such thing. You know, it's, it's like some speech saying by someone important that thank you... Uh, we already know each other, you know, like we know, you, you, you know what I, what, what I want and I know what you want. So do it, you know, after the, the 6 October massacre, if you remember, yeah. you remember that. So yeah. they, they don't, there are not need to be any orders or command because they already know each other. Like what to do. This this kind of throws back to our one one two episode that we did before and the kind of coded language right. that you have to speak in. That, that, that's right. That's yeah. right. That that maybe in some ways a code, but but I think half of that is truth. You know, because like they're, they're not going to come down and say what to do. You know, so the military will get the signal, and when they commit a coup, they say like, okay, this is the sound from the heaven, and yeah, let's do it. You know, not only not only not only one general willing to do it and it will be succeed. You know, you, you, you said that around 13 or 14 coups success in Thailand, but, yeah. but there's a lot of coups that, that's unsuccessful. Why is that's that? That's true. Because, because it's wrong, it's wrong signal. Or maybe sometimes it's the wrong time. It's just the wrong time. It, it's just not the right time to do it. So, you know, it, it, the military, they, they have the confidence to do it every time, but, but not every time they will do it and they will succeed. So, so they're kind of like reading the tea leaves 
waiting for a clear sign, and then yeah. if they feel it's ready, they'll go for it. I was going to say, like, yeah. so what? The, the the army is telepathic, and they just communicate by sending each other messages in their brain. Mm. Uh, that's they don't they don't have to say anything. Yeah, that's right. So so that that's why that that's why I told you that that needs to be a tour from the army chief. You know, like all over mm -hmm. the country mm -hmm. to, to to vibe people out. Yeah, yeah. to vibe people I out to. To ask for the leaders, you know, mostly they are, you know, they are major general, you know, in, in each province. Like, what do they think about the situation in Thailand? They convinced them to, to join the team. Because, like, there was once that the army in Chiang Mai, they won't cooperate with, with the coup. Like, not, not the 2014, you know, like the, the one before that. Like, they, they don't really want to cooperate. But the one against uh, Thaksin? The Thaksin, yeah. Yeah, that one yeah. In, in Chiang Mai because it, it's a Thaksin's turf, right? In, in Chiang Mai, so so the military there they 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 weren't happy to cooperate, but but somehow you know at last you know they did because of some signal. So that 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 needs to be you know sometimes convincing is not enough, but you have to you have to know the point where to to press the button. You know, so so that, so that it's all that, it's all very real, real politics. Yeah, it's, it's real politics in the military. If, if you if you're interested, I, I think the the work of uh, Professor Sulachat Bamlumsuk, if you ever heard mm -hmm. of him, you know he he, he analyzes it as, as very well. Apart from apart from Ajahn uh, uh, saying about the warrior, you know, and and the uh, the eagles and and everything, you know, the new book, his new book from. That, that the one that is controversy right now with his uh, PhD dissertation, saying the United States come to play the political role in Thailand when Phibun Songkhlam was in the power as a prime minister. That was the beginning of the uh, of the military power expanded in Thailand. But after that, you know, after the the the, the Phibun era, there's a lot of controversy like that. The uh, struggle of power between the military itself. And the change of uh, the, the article by Paul Chamber that I sent you last time. Yeah, remember that? yeah in that, the, that New Mandala. Yeah, in, in New Mandala. It, it's, like, it's like the change of the power in the military. It's not like you, you are in the uh, Bulapa Payak, the, the Eastern Taika, will be in power forever. Uh, now, we're going to go on to those factions in a bit. Yeah, I have, yeah. A, I have a question about that. Yeah, but yeah. like, just to go back a little bit to um, my earlier question, which was kind of like, how, how do they justify themselves to themselves? How do they justify this? Because, you know, Thailand generally considers itself to be a democracy and in a, in a kind of Western tradition in some ways. And, and no other there are no other countries where the military has such an active role um, in 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 the politics of the country unless it's a complete military dictatorship so i'm wondering how, how the military kind of justifies itself ideologically to itself um back then you know before i think before the 2014 coup you know they were like okay we're democratic democratic with the monarchy you know it's different from from constitutional monarchy right because you have yeah. to be Constitution and then monarchy and then monarchy has to be under the constitution. That's constitution monarchy. But but democracy or democratic regime with the monarchy, you know, you have monarchy, but but you, you didn't you didn't know where to put the monarchy, right? It's like it's not a position. It's just saying that it is exist, but where is it, right? You you didn't you you didn't you didn't. You didn't you didn't tell where the position of it so that that that's one problem and they said like we always democracy we are democracy before 2014 and after that uh the pdrc the cop of us all you remember that you, you, that that protest they were like yeah the they, they yes, were like yeah. no we're, we're not democracy we, we don't want democracy we want absolute mm. monarchy we want absolute dictatorship that that that's the truth. That that's that's how the military see themselves always. Yeah, that they always see themselves as the the biggest brother in this country. They they always have the real power, which is the gun, uh, tanks, and you know, like anti aircraft or whatever the hell that is. You know, like they they have all if, kind of. If power. they need that against some red shirt protesters, bring out the anti aircraft yeah, guns. Yeah, that's right. You know, like they they have all the power, the real power that they can kill you. And they, they mm -hmm. think that democracy won't work in Thai state, but they just, they just can't say because it's a democratic regime with the monarchy. If you bring down monarchy, maybe it's effect 
to uh, if you bring down the democracy, maybe it mm. affect to the monarchy. So that's the point that they're afraid of. So they won't touch democracy before that. But after 2014, the PDRC protester, the Prayut Jan Ochaku, it's perfectly clear that they just don't care anymore with the word democracy with the monarchy. So they just put the monarchy above. And then like what the, whatever political regime you're going to use, that you're going to use, that whatever the, uh, uh, governed by good people, you know, like uh, good people, are more that are more important than uh, structure or constitution or whatever the hell that is. You know, I, I just had a chat with some uh, with some higher rank uh, uh, independent organization in Thailand. He's saying that like, oh, it the constitutional amendment was not important because it, it's not the constitution that had a problem. It's the people. If the people in the structure is good, everything is good. So they just don't care about the regime anymore. It's like good people, good people. That that's the new myth that Thailand are going through, you know, with the military that believe that they are themselves good people and skilled people to do anything. They are capable to do anything, you know, doing war, governing, you know, economics and everything. Well, it's, that, it's that, curious that you you say this because there has at the same time been this shift because. For the first time, we've seen a junta transition into being a supposedly democratically elected government. So mm -hmm. it seems like definitely, you know, this cycle of coup, protest, election, protest, coup has mm -hmm. kind of been broken by Prayut finally. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems like it's the solution the whole time was this kind of faux democracy where you have basically very powerful military generals winning supposedly elections mm -hmm. although there mm -hmm. were some questions about the legitimacy of those elections it's quite similar to israel actually um all of their uh, prime ministers have been former military generals or something like that um so it's 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 like you say it's a it's a it's not it is a kind of i feel like they're still making some kind of um, gesture towards democracy, but at the same time using that ideal uh, mm. for their own purposes, right? Right. Yes. Exactly. So uh, it, it's a it's election, you know, like it, it doesn't need to. But but yeah, they they're gonna claim themselves to be democracy, but democracy is not important anymore. You know, it's like yeah. Okay. So uh, so that that's why. You know, so I I'll I'll pointing out that point that General Bayut is leader of, of security, leader of economics in this country, you know, like he's a leader of everything. So that that's proved the point that I just said that military believe mm. that they are capable to do anything in this country. Mm. You know, it, it's, it's him, only himself, you know, can do it. So no matter how, how, how much you're going to get the MP, like Pua Thai Party, they got the most MP in, in yeah. the parliament, but they, they, they cannot form the government. You know, they cannot form anything. So because, because Prayut has a plan that he's going to win anyway, you know, no matter what, no matter how, you know, they, they, they're going to take this power. So maybe the election happened because they just want it to be happen. They, they, they planned it before. And one thing that I should note here is uh, Thai military, they only fight a war on a plan, you know, they don't actually go out and kill, you know, they, they, they're like, okay, on my side, I have Prayut Bawit or someone, you know, and, and on the side, mm -hmm. who, who, who they're going to have in the plan in, 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 in the field. And then they calculate it. Okay. 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 I won. Okay. So at that side, your position, you're going to surrender in some way. Yeah. It's you like know, real that, politic, like we yeah, were saying. That, that's right. That, yeah. That's right. Okay, cool. So um, you mentioned earlier, Ice, about the different factions in the army. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah. Uh, uh, the army has a lot of factions, especially in the past like two decades. You know, the, uh, the Eastern Tiger group, you know, were formed uh, by General Bowit. You know, but we, mm -hmm. uh, when when he you know hold the table to the former prime minister Taksin, <laughs> saying that like I I want to be uh, the army chief to do you know whatever he wanted to, and Taksin gave him permission, then put him in the power, and then they they uh, he formed the power itself to be him uh, 
his you know like so called brother and อนุพงศ์ประยุทธ์สามปอ three ปอ three p you remember yeah mm-hmm. I heard that in in the news like a bomb ป๊อกประยุทธ์ yeah so so that 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 was the leader of this group and some somehow things change you know like you don't know there was some backstabbing yeah there was it was not really a backstabbing but but maybe some some people just got into a position got into a power uh, from a different group you know like who who knows how that's gonna happen like nobody knows you know like some some signal again you know saying that okay you should be going away and then someone else will take this position and you have to be smart enough how to deal with the new guy to be in the power. Like because mm-hmm. now you're prime minister, maybe you're head of security, you're deputy prime minister, but 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 you don't hold the real power, you know. Like just just I I just said before that the real power, the real guns, tank, anti-aircraft, or whatever, you know. Like the the weapons that can kill were not directly on your hand, but in the hand of the army chief. And how do you going to start the relationship, a good relationship with the army chief, that preventing him from 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 take the power away from you, so uh, you I, can't subordinate him. Yeah, yeah. As yeah. a democratically elected leader. Yeah, that's right. And and how 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 are you going to manage this? And people said that oh, Prayut is stupid. You know, he he's the dumbest prime minister ever in Thai history. But if you look on this military perspective, you know he handled it pretty good with the army chief, like the one the the previous one, uh, General of uh, Apilat. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, Big Dang. You know he handled yeah. with Big Dang very well. You know, like mm. th- there's a lot of rumors saying that uh, 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 General Avilat will cool. You know, will seize the power yeah. from General Bayut. But no, he he handled that power very well. You know, and the- it's really interesting. The the new guy who's in there seems mm. like a total cuddly bear. Like he does not seem threatening at all. Right? Yeah, he's not seem threatening at all. But but he has. You know, he. Also, an alumni from from the military academy, from from C R M A. And is he is he Eastern Tigers? Uh, no, 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 not this guy. He is not Eastern Tiger. Eastern Tiger was finished uh, after General. Uh, I I can't remember his name. Maybe maybe uh, Chalom Chai or something. You know, like the 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 one before the election. There there was a change, and then. And then the the one before General Pilat and General Pilat was was the different faction in in the military. You you can see from the table in in, in Paul Chambers' uh, articles there. Uh, I'll advertise it here because it, it's it's quite important because if you want to understand uh, how 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 power dynamic in in military elites and the government change in Thailand, you gotta understand this 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 piece of power relation between. The government and the military. Why, mm. why Ying Lak Chinawat back then in that time, she doesn't change the army chief. There was General Prayut. She doesn't who, get rid of Prayut. Yeah, yeah, she doesn't get rid of Prayut, but she tried to create a good relationship with Prayut. But eventually, you know, Prayut sees the power anyway, so it, it's not successful. It's like Chinawat's family was, I I, I don't want to say was fooled by by these uh, military elites. So that 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 you know who holds the real power in in Thai politics, and if you want to change this, how do you manage the power relation between the military and the uh, you know so-called civil politics or whatever? Who so who is the the leading faction in the military right now? Uh, you know, like some people, some people has a different theory, saying that no, it, it's not. It, power is not centralized to the army chief mm. because, like the army chief and and uh, other members, has a red rim. You know, rim the T-shirts no. rim that the red one. Yeah, that that red rim uh, signifies some kind of faction in the Thai military already. You know, who is not the red rim and who is the red rim? You know, like deep down inside, they know they're different. They're from different line. They're from the different uh, different groups, uh, but in the big picture, they have to show that they are in the unity. They are in unity, mm-hmm. but but not deep down. You know, deepening down, Prayut knows that who he's gonna who he's gonna go to if if there's a signal of 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 coup. You know, maybe the military in 
in Bangkok, they mostly turn it into royal security, something, you know, like most of them in Bangkok. But a lot of military barracks or military center in each provinces are not, you know, and you have to count which weapons that the military outside Bangkok has and mm. the military inside Bangkok. And that, that's the plan. That's the plan in, in, in your virtual field that you can calculate which one will, will win and which one will have efficiency to destroy each other and who will win eventually. It's interesting though because the way you describe it, it sounds like there's a potential for a kind of civil war um, between these two factions, but it's never, it's never come to that. It's never come into the real civil war, but there is a virtual civil war, you know. Like, they are always fighting in the plan. They're always fighting in a virtual field. They're always calculating. Do you think Prayut and, and the current army chief on the same page? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think they, they are actually on the same page. Not like Prayut and Bowit. Not like when, when, when General Bowit was... Uh, military secretary and the yeah. Nobuyut was the army chief. Not like that. When, they're, they're yeah. not like brother like that. But they have to manage the relation between each other to sustain this power and to be in power and to, to be like, you know, utilitarian or whatever, whatever you call, you know, like, I think no one really controls it. No one really mm -hmm. controls it. You, you have to negotiate every time. That's there's a there's still a power struggle and then there's a maybe there's a third like third poll called free youth or protester right. people's movement then you have to understand that there are there are power struggling between these at least two poles elites containing military struggling and if you want to finish this if you want to win how are you going to manage this kind of power struggling it's not it's not like you bring out a lot of people you know 10,000 millions of people and they're going to go out no because they're, they're not a populist leader no matter how you're going to bring populist movement or new social movement to put them out mm. they won't go because they, 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 they didn't come in that way in the first place mm. so I just just to underscore all of this what you're saying is that all all of these different factions or players in the military, the ultimate, the ultimate at the top of the diamond, there is the monarchy, which they are all loyal to. So I'm guessing a lot of this is kind of vying for control, or not control, vying for who is the most uh, true and honest uh, server of the monarchy, right? Who has the monarchy's best interests at heart? Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. At, at this point, okay. I, I don't really sure anymore after, after, uh, after Pumipon consensus. Like the, the era, the politics, the Thai politics yeah. after the Pumipon era. But now, it, may, maybe on the top of the diamond, maybe in, 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 in Pumipon era, maybe it is. Maybe what, what, what you uh. said about the, the top of the, the, the yeah. diamond and who has the monarch best interest. But now, there are no such uh, consensus anymore. So are you suggesting that there may be some people in the military who are not loyal to Vajila Longkorn? That's beyond my... <laughs> 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 that's, that's beyond my ability to talk. Uh, okay, so well look, hey, we've run yeah, into but... a brick wall, so mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. should we move on a little bit? I, 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 got, one, I, got, one, well, I got one last comment. So, so basically, mm -hmm. right, so like the... So essentially, what I'm hearing is that the the internal sort of in the fighting between um, the the so the different factions in the military basically makes like the Thai army not no better than Mean Girls. It's just an American high school, and they're all sort of fighting yeah. amongst each other in these cliques. So it's uh, it, it, yeah. makes, it makes you laugh at the whole situation more than feel the existential dread that exists because of it. But yeah, uh, you know, as you were saying, from Columbia. You, you know what? Maybe it is. Maybe, maybe it is a mean goal, but but with with the with the money of Thai people, <laughs> Thai people pay tax for them to play the game. Like 
Mm, mm, that is another it's, point, it's, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, no, what, what's the point of this? I, I know you're playing a game. I know you're playing a mean girls game or, or whatever, you know, like high school girls, you know, try to um, make, you know, a higher ground to each other. But, but, but what, what, what is it? Like, this is, this is a country. Like, we're, it, we're, it's we're, a disconnect. We're, it shows the disconnect between the people and, like, um, the, the, the military and... And yeah, the people in the yeah. military, they sort of uh, forget I, that they're actually there's a country, there's a country out there that we're supposed to be doing something about. But yeah, in reality, I, I, I just, totally uh, agree with that point. With, with the point that they, they, it's disconnect between the people and, and and them. That's why you bring out a lot of people in like in the free youth movement, Kanala uh, Sadon movement, uh, the RT movement. Is that like uh, it's it's like it's like it it, it makes nothing to them. Because like it's it's been disconnected for a long time, and yeah. how are you gonna connect it to him? It's it it's the next question that if you want to drive the movement into another level, the next year, right? Next year, uh, yeah, ne- next year, uh, the the protest leader said like we need to elevate the protest into another level. How do you connect this point? Like 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 Samai said, like it's been disconnected between the people, and 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 the elite. And how are you going to connect this? So um, can we move on a little bit? Uh, we've already talked about raw door, but uh, I want to talk about the draft, the conscription. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. could either one of you guys explain how conscription works, like the lottery system? Uh, mm-hmm. So I, I can I, I can explain it through um through an anecdote. So essentially, okay. if, if you don't decide to um join up um voluntarily. You've got your um, you've got your uh, your lottery system, which is you stick your hand in in a, in a bag with some balls, and whilst your hand is in this ball bag, um, you pull out one ball, and if it's red, you're conscripted. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's black, you'd be fine. And now, obviously, you can uh, you know, give a bit, a little bit of financial incentive to have there be more black balls than red balls or only black balls and no red balls and um what happened was one of my cousins not to dox me or anything but one of my cousins his um the the place where um he, he is registered to they had no spaces left for conscription so he wanted to voluntarily join the army however in their last cycle of lottery um lotteries um they got more people into the um, local um, battalion or local regiment, I'm not actually sure what the division is, the local, you know, army division yeah. um, that they needed. So people who want to join the army are prevented from joining the army because of the conscription lottery and the quotas and all that stuff. And um, that's the reason why people do Rodor is to get out of having to do the um, Baidang Baidang type situation yeah so raw door is like the light version like it doesn't take as much time like i yeah, think you so don't spend it literally you don't spend any time years, at all you right? spend barely any time because instead of two years you spend you spend 30 40 days <laughs> over the course of three years or if or if you're an insane um maniac like ice you, you do with five years and yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but I just wanted to say, like, generally speaking, this this two year stint, um, Ice, maybe you can talk to this a little bit better. But what you actually spend your time doing, from what I've heard, is pretty much just chores. Like, you're not. Yeah, basic. But no, but like, I, I spoke to somebody who did it and he was saying, like, yeah, we were just fucking cleaning the general's cars for two years. Like, well, in, in conscription or in chores. year four and five of in, in conscription. Oh, yeah. In conscription. I, I don't know what they do in conscription. Uh, I, I've heard, you know, it, it, it's a condition, you know, if, if like your, your cousin want to voluntarily be conscript, right? You, you can just apply. If you apply voluntarily, uh, you will only be there for like a year or a year and a half. So they, they will like cut your time off. But if you go there and you, and you pick up the lotto and you got red, you definitely get two years. You know, so it, it, it's about... It's a, it's a matter of you, like, if you want to go there and, like, saying that I voluntarily want to join. So they, they were like, you know, you'll you, you be there less. You'll be there so it defeats like the purpose year year of, of, of joining. Yeah, I, I want to spend yeah, time it, in the army, but I'm gonna, you're going to give me less time because I want to spend time. However, my mm-hmm. friend here who doesn't want to spend any time will have to spend more time. 
Yeah, that's <laughs> right. And, and, it's, and, and it's like um, it's and, like when you're haggling, mm-hmm. trying to trying to give them more money. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like it, it it it's quite bad because because if people who really want to be an army, you know, mm-hmm. like who who really want to join an army, who really want to be a soldier, they can do two year max, and then they will like they they just kick you off. If you want to continue to be like corporal or surgeon, you have to test. You know, like you have to like have an exam to to be. But but how? You know, like people who 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 has not been educated at all in their life that they just want to join an army, they don't stand a chance because they 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 just can't they just can't pass the exam. So and what's what's the salary like as well? Uh, for it's, the for it, the it's now a ten ten thousand baht, I think. For for the conscription, a month. A, a month, yeah, a month, ten thousand baht. That's less than minimum wage. Okay. Yeah, it's less than. It's less. Yeah, it's less. Back back then it was eight. It it was eight, eight thousand. Now it's ten thousand. It's like they. Jesus. Yeah, and 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 then there was a problem because like, uh, it was three month training, like a very hard training with people kicking your ass. You know, like actually kick your ass, and and there's a sexual harassment as well. Uh, they let you, you know, like uh. Uh, bath together with all of you naked and some you the the surgeon you know your your leader will come and rape you at at the back yeah. and and, and they, they can do whatever they want to these guys you know this guy was like a slave you know these guys were like slaves so it was like back then you know we, we have talked when, about when are you talking about what what kind of time uh when you say back then what how long ago no 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 talking? yeah yeah back Back a moment ago, we talk about the military elites, right? Like the ah. the the striking power between the army chief and the government, and those people suppose they were they were elite, they were lords or anything. These people were like slaves, you know. In comparison, you know, like so 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 they can do anything with these people because these people would just would would just serve that they have to serve you. Mm. So you can like. Fuck them in the ass, you know. Like watch them masturbate to each other, you know. I've heard that, like people will, like yeah. yeah, lay down, you know, in a row, and then some people just roll over them, and then like, you know, like roll over them, and then like stay, and then like the other guys come and rolls again naked, you know. Like that, that's conscription. So that's why people don't want to go to the army. That they, they they don't want to join because they're, they're these disgusting things, you know. And yeah. if you're unlucky. You may die, you know. Yeah, you, I was going to ask you about that. There have been some suspicious. Yeah, that I means been, pretty clear cut, but yeah. suspicious deaths. If, if you don't uh, really yeah. obey, you know, if you don't obey, you know, if you don't let them, you know, like fuck you, or you don't let them play you like that, maybe they they just they just attack you, they kick you, they slap you, they do anything to you, and somehow and they you can die. beat you to death. Yeah, yeah, they can beat you to death. There, there was that one case, I think it was at the officer's college, where the guy's dead body was found in a punching bag, right? Mm, mm, yeah, yeah, that's right. So they, they just like, maybe they, they said like, okay, I'll discipline you by putting you in, in, in the punching bag and then let everybody kick you, you know, like, and finally you died. And someone will like, you know, drink, drink water, like they, they just give you water and you drink it, drink, drink, drink until your lung has exploded and then you die. Jesus. You know, like there's, there's a lot of cases. So because these people were like slaves, they were slaves, you know, like they, they, yeah. you can do anything about them. So that's why people just go to raw door and then avoid this shit, you know, like mm. you, you, you just skip this thing. So it's better. But in order to be raw door, you have to be a high school student. So that's why that 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 means that you have to be educated enough to be raw door, and mm. you have to finish your high school matayom six. You have to finish matayom yeah. six to 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 get that ticket, where you don't need not to. Not everyone go to, does. Yeah, not not everyone does. If if you don't finish, finish matayom six, yeah you, yeah, you need you you still need to go to the ballot and and pick up the lotto. <laughs> for conscription, so yeah. so that's bad. And and people who who really want to join the army, they can't join it after because sometimes there were no room for you, there were no position for you. So they just mm. kick you out, and you just lost two years in 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 the military. So two years that you can build your career, you can start your life. Somebody has a family, somebody has wife, kids. You know, you just lost your kid, lost your wife, and lost your job, and lost anything. Then how how are so, you gonna? So you're you're kind of saying they would rather have the slaves than the real soldiers. 
Yeah, that's right. So that you know, all the soldier that they sent, you know, to to uh, to suppose war or or the protest, you know, in in Bangkok or anywhere, what was these slaves? You know, there were these uh, private military conscripts. You know, mm. there 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 never been some kind of military academy. You know, not not like that. They they were just maybe so, they go down to command, not not them, mm. not they themselves who actually in the field. So I I also wanted to give a shout out to Netiwit, the Chula Longkorn activist mm -hmm. uh, who's going to become the first person to be jailed for refusing to comply with the conscription mm -hmm. lottery. Mm -hmm. Like Netiwit and I may disagree on a lot of things, but I do definitely admire the stance he's taking, and all credit to him for that. Yeah, big, yeah. Big, big so, cojones. I mean, there, there is no conscientious objector clause mm. in mm. Thailand, right? Yeah. And and imagine, imagine, imagine Netiwit because he 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 he's quite famous now, you know. And and he did a lot of things back then, uh, in 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 like past decades. And imagine if he if he needs to be conscript, he he begin training in the barrack. Like imagine what 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 they're gonna do to him. You know, like and I mean, I hope I hope they treat him good in prison. I mean, I was talking to him about it last is he, year. Is he, he, he going like, to go into a prison? Yeah, that's what he said. Oh, but but yeah. but but, but he, he, he's he, going to do the court case. But mm -hmm. I I think he's pretty um I pre he's pretty sure he's going to lose. But he's going to do it just to make a point. You know. Yeah, I, I think Nate Witt is one 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 kind of people that uncovered this, you know, like this this shit in Thailand. This, this, uh, this, those all the things going wrong in Thailand was uncovered by him. So I'll, I'll yeah. give him credit for for, for this. Yeah, but, he's a good, he's a good guy. Like you yeah. know, super liberal, but good guy. Um, so I mean, just kind of to tie this all together, mm -hmm. you kind of for the past hour painted this kind of picture of this like fucking mm -hmm. awful superstructure <laughs> of the military. Mm -hmm. um, so Maya, is there anything else you'd kind of like to add? I or? was I was interested in how sort of things relate around like the concepts of like toxic masculinity, because I'm you know I'm thinking about the so the the hyper individualism that exists. Um, in the sense that you know, it's like the good, the the good person, like the the the, the powerful man. So sort of, what's it called? Like the strong man or the great leader, the great leader, the great leader mentality, right? Where it's um like I am this person in charge of this country now. I will make all the changes, right? That's one thing. And then there's another thing where it's like we are part of this organization, the military. We have such obligations because of you know tradition. And because of all these sort of patriarchal um, sort of understandings of what a man is supposed to be. And then that translates even further into the, the hazing rituals and then the, the sexual assault and the rape that happens. Um, the, the, the sexual assault that happens um, inside the, 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 conscript, the conscript camps. So I think that's interesting if we sort of view it from a lot of this has to do with sort of the internalized um, um, sort of uh, anxiety that Thai men in the army have um, that l makes them do these things like you know the whole pa the, the, the shady paranoia thing with the factions and and that kind of thing I, I, it, it's uh, you know us from a psychological perspective I think things like this should also be considered uh, yeah yeah I, I think I think so that's uh, that's your the great leader the toxic masculinity it's all related to the military character in Thailand because they, they believe that they are the great leader, that they can do anything with this country. And, and they act themselves as the big brother in this country. So, so yeah, that, 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 that's not unusual to, to say that the military thinking or how they see themselves, yeah, they see themselves as those uh, toxic masculinity person so should we all stand for the national anthem and then absolutely we can be done um, like is it is it six now i i think it's nearly six right um uh who wants to sing us out very the last word very good yeah cheers. Chayo, it's Chayo, like, cheers. 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 important part all right. All right, guys. Okay. See All right. you uh, next week. Bye-bye. Yeah. yeah, I'll see you.